we are getting a little bit better solar power right now. The leaves are starting to fill out, so now I'm going to start getting reduced power. But I've talked to a guy who's going to come over Monday, and because I just don't have time. I have plenty of resources here, but I don't have time. So he's going to clear out a 50-foot deep strip here all the way back to widen my meadow and give me more sunlight. Well, we're back here again for another uh, OGN news on the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid nightmare. Sometimes I wonder if doing it yourself is the right thing for some people. Okay, commentaries. And in the clip I just put up, boy, he says he's thinking about cutting down a bunch of trees. All right? Would improve his solar. I tend to agree it yeah, would. But he says he didn't have time to do it. What the heck are you doing, Troy? You don't have a job. Really, you don't. And to drop a few trees is too much for you? I agree it might get a little bit fun with the larger ones, but um, you should be able to at least clear out some of the little ones. I mean, I can see getting a tree guy to do some big ones if you don't have the time. But he's going to want money for that top job, you know, and you don't really have a income. The light is almost all green already. It's 9 o'clock in the morning and we're pulling in some power. So I do think improving the wires has improved my overall solar power production because usually I wouldn't have even this much power with uh, almost full shade on the solar panel. So that's pretty nice. The batteries are up. Like I said, the light is almost in the green already. So this is very happy, very, very good. And uh, last night I think the batteries were at 12.6, 12.7. It was fluctuating between 12.6 and 7 after running the uh, computer literally all day and the internet all day and various other devices and things in the tiny house on wheels. So um, that's really good. And now when I get some more solar panels set up, we're going to have even better production here at the uh, off-grid homestead. You said that fixing that rat nest of wires of yours uh, helped a lot. Well, I tend to agree. Fixing the wiring rat nest of yours would help a great deal. So yeah, I agree. That was probably part of the reasons you were having trouble getting those batteries to charge up. Now, forklift batteries require power and requires to be brought up, right? Because you know, we're going to battery theory. I usually don't try to do tech. You want to charge up your battery into absorption. And once it gets up there, then it goes in the float, right? Which is already even out. Well, from my understanding of forklift batteries, and this is just from my general research, absorption oil will take it up to about 85, 90%, give or take. And then it's designed over time to float up and trickle charge up. At least that's what I get from what access to manuals I can find. Uh, there's not a lot out there. I'm sure you got one with a battery that we help you procure, but. Uh, <clears throat> somebody doesn't read but how about adding some safety devices to it I mean I mentioned in the last clip about putting disconnect switches but one of the things I forgot and didn't think about until afterwards was fusing you should put fuses between your major connection points uh, well some places circuit breakers and others I mean high current load you don't want circuit breakers um, other areas you want fuses. Most people put a fuse, and I forgot the kind of fuse, I, I can see it in my head. It's sort of like you flip and lock and then you put a cover plate over. But they put that between the charge controller and the batteries, right? And then I've seen some people put fuses coming in from the um, uh, solar panels going in in case it gets hit by lightning. That way it protects the charge controllers so that don't blow it up. Because it's going to pop that fuse first. And then coming off your battery going into your uh, load, regardless of what your load is, 
it goes into a distribution panel. Most people in the distribution panel put in circuit breakers, uh, DC circuit breakers. And that way you can have multiple loads coming off a DC circuit breaker panel. So uh, part of it would go to your, um, your inverter and using 12 volts, you're gonna be drawing about 120 amps at full operation. Uh, I'd probably get like 150 amp. I don't know, I, I don't have the measurements of the uh, breakers off the top of my head. But I do it just a bit a little over, just so it doesn't pop when it goes to full load. And it you know, gives you, you know, you need a little wiggle room, so you know, whatever. And then you might have surge and that kind of thing. So you got to factor that in. And I don't know your use case, but you have to figure that out. But the rest of it, yeah, I would probably put circuit breakers in, five, ten amp breakers, twenty-five in some places. And then that way, if you got a short, it pops and it saves your equipment. This is protecting your equipment. Now, the disconnect switches is to protect your life and allow you to do maintenance. Good. This is what the batteries need. So those old batteries that I was using just wouldn't get up to the right voltage to kick into float mode. Or they weren't, the, well, the charge controller knows what it's doing better than I do. So anyway... Okay, on this next clip, you said not using the batteries helped you charge it up to full voltage. That's true. If you don't have a load, batteries tend to charge up quicker. Just saying. And uh, you're back to your battery excuse again. No, it's not the battery, Troy. It's the operator. Um, you got bad wearing, poor design, and it's still, I believe, in, in this case, the wrong equipment. Morningstar might be able to do it, but I don't recommend Morningstar. At least not in this use case. Now, if you're going to stick with automotive cell batteries, then yeah, I still say go for it. Uh, the do-it-yourself boat seems to think the Morningstar will work quite well with four clip batteries. If you would have used the custom setting that I and 20 others told you to use. I didn't know about the 20 others, I just knew about me. And according to other people that I happen to know, they suggested it as well. But hey, nobody can tell you what's right and wrong, only you know, you're the expert, right? I wouldn't trust you to lead a Johnny Brigade. And yes, charge controllers can do a far better job than you. Now, but here's the thing, Troy. You've got to program it to what to do. Because it only does what it's told to do. So if you program in the correct specifications, then it would do what it was supposed to do, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly two notes. So much stuff. Oh yeah, one thing I noticed. Your other charge controller was blinking back and forth between charge and full. Could there be a problem there? Maybe wiring? Programming maybe? Or maybe it's not a good idea to use MPPT and uh, a pulse width modulation on the same battery at the same time. <sighs> well, what do you think? Take care. If you keep going into solar, I'll be around. Going to water, I'll be around. You go into anything I know, I'll be around. Other things I do know, but I think there's other people. Hey, <coughs> yourself. That could probably add more comments and see more ob obvious things you're doing wrong, Troy. Like mulching. I think you didn't quite do it right. Like do mulch on it, which is better than no mulch. But did you clear the stuff out that was under it? I mean, if there's grass or weeds under it, you need to remove that first, then mulch it. Just say. I'm not a great gardener, but I am a good gardener. Well, you'll find out soon. Take care, Troy. Ta ta. Shalom. I've uh, heavily mulched around the grapes and the berries. I put it on really thick and heavy. 
and then we're just gonna mow around there. Oh, I missed a grape. I knew there was something there. Yeah, the grapes are being drowned out in the plant, the weeds. There's one there, there's another one there. Yeah, that's a berry. So I mulched heavily. Now you've all wanted to meet me and I'm Sam. Lee may not know lots about planting, he may be good, but I'm better. And I brought a little friend with me from England. Another little friend apart from myself. This is a troll. This is a cute troll. He will be in my videos too. As we're all one big happy family. So he will be sitting just off camera. Now Troy, I tried to tell you when we were all friends, you can't just put mulch down on top of weeds and grass. It will carry on growing. Unless your mulch is thick, and I mean thick, which is what the gardening you're supposed to be doing is, you can't just have a little bit and expect it to kill your weeds. You need to take the weeds out. Putting it round your fruit bushes, the mulch, is going to still strangle your plants, still take water from your plants, still not going to boost your plants. Now, you planted trees, what, three, four years ago when you first moved out there? They give you any fr fruit yet? No, because you didn't follow advice. One, you didn't cage them first. You only did that last year, so you, the deers killed everything. But then you caged it, but you still didn't take the weeds out around the trees. Trees don't like to compete with things. That's why out in your little forest area, there's no weeds. There's lots of mulch, no weeds, because they can't grow, because the trees don't let them. But in that little field you have, you have to take the weeds out if you want more trees to grow. Now, if you had have done that, even though the deers ate the trees, you would have had fruit this year, which meant you would have been able to look after your wife properly. How is she eating? Or is that because you're paying more for food? How's that going for you? More food outlay means less for you to waste on crap though. So bonus! Now, I've got a couple of books that I like because I've had to change my way of gardening because different climate. America is in England. What a shocker. Now, yes, you're using a certain way of planting, not what I would use, but you still need to know how to look after certain plants. They want different nutrients. So if you ever checked your soil, what nutrients are in your soil? Do you know how much potassium, nitrogen is in your soil? No? <gasps> Shock! Troy doesn't do all his homework. How about getting a fruit book? Not just crap off the internet that anybody writes. How about getting a book that plenty of people read that know what they're talking about? It will even tell you when the best plant times to trim them off, not the beginning of the spring, because you want to sew up your garden. The best timing for some things is at the end of summer, when they finish flowering and fruiting. So, you have grapevines. They're not tied properly. They were wrapped around your fence that was there. That's not how grapes grow. Even wild grapes don't grow like that. So try getting a good fruit book. 
<laughs> now you go on about organic farming. What the hell do you know about organic farming? You eat at McDonald's. That is definitely not organic. Try getting an organic farming guide. It explains the nutrients in the soil that you will need. So, doing the line research that you do, which we know you do, which is why shit blows up on your farm all the time, why things don't grow, and why you look like shit, because you eat so much McDonald's. For you to eat properly, you need to grow properly. You need resources. Now, after my education lesson, I'd like to say hi. And bye. And Troy, you're a dick.